No, I can't. I have these two dumb bitches <laughs> podcast studio in my dining room, okay? I do have some bad news right off the bat. Oh, God. I hate to uh, start off with bad news. The podcast we did yesterday is horrible. What happened? Because of the sound? The rain. The rain? It sounded just like static going shh. The whole time? I mean, from like eight minutes on. Oh, yeah. That's a bummer. Well, that's that. That's life. You can't control the weather. Yesterday was Super Tuesday, and I just saw a headline from some, you know, politics thing I follow, whatever podcast. It said, old fuck versus sick fuck. It's official. I mean, there's been nothing more true than that. A hundred percent. Yeah, it's fucking funny. It made me laugh. I shared it on my Instagram, and I typed L-O-L with a Z. And then the people say, oh, don't get political. Not sure, because I just posted it actually about two minutes before we did this. Started recording this. That's right, folks. She is posting up until the minute that she comes into the podcast arena. That's right, folks. We are constantly creating content. We are creating content all the time in our brains, putting notes into our phone. We are always doing stuff, sometimes at the expense of our loved ones. And sometimes <laughs> we don't get to see them as often because we're out traveling and doing whatever. And then sometimes we're taking videos of our loved ones while they're just trying to enjoy a fucking dinner. <laughs> but we need some motherfucking content. And sometimes we do a bit so hard and so long that an employee of Zany's looks terrified of us. <laughs> Which one was it? When we were like, you pooped in there. You pooped in there. Oh. You pooped in there. You pooped in And she's like, I didn't. We're like, you pooped in there. You pooped. And then she was just like, okay. We said it over and over and over again. All she needed was some floss. And then we were like, you pooped in there. You pooped in there. Yeah, because uh, a manager at Zany's Nashville snuck into our green room yesterday, which is fine. I don't give a fuck. I'm not saying snuck into our green room like a shitty thing. Right. They they work there. That green room's more of theirs than mine. Yeah. Yeah. But they snuck in there, and we immediately just fucking went in on her. Well, because she was like, I just had to go in there to get something out of my tooth. Yeah, and we were like, yeah, whatever, you lying bitch. You're like, you you pooped in there. Just admit it, you pooped. And would not stop. We were did it relentlessly to the point of I became uncomfortable how much of a bully I was being. Yeah, no, it was kind of one of those. You do in a minute. Oh! <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Probably somebody putting a dead body in their storage, storage unit. <laughs> I hope so. Um you know, I hope it's a mummy. It's not an actual dead person. I'm hoping it's <laughs> well, just... Well, mummies are actual dead people. Well, I mean, like, a, a mu you know, someone that's mummified, that's like a fun process, you know? <laughs> I've never mummified anyone. Neither have I. Maybe. I've never even done toilet paper on somebody to mummify them. I've never done that full out. Have you ever taken masking tape and put it on your Ken Barbie doll to make it look like a mummy for a project in sixth grade? I, I have not done that. I did it. Yeah. Pretty cool. What was the project? What what was... It was some kind of like make a diorama or something of Egypt or something. I don't know. <laughs> what is... Di I, I have not heard that word in so long. I don't even know what a diorama is. You just make a thing. Yeah. I feel like it's like a, 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 a two, two wall <laughs> area. Something going on in there. And you're like, this is a desert. These are the kind of animals that live in a desert. This is the terrain, and these are the plants. <laughs> yeah, I stole these camels from my little brother's stuff so that I could signify this is the desert. His little toys. Yeah, from, from my brother's little toys. I took them. Speaking of little toys and diorama, if I was going to make one of, I don't know, a farm diorama, I could have a, uh, the farmer's wife. Okay, I think that's Snow White. No, that's the farmer's wife for my diorama. Oh, okay. Mrs. Sullivan. <clears throat> okay. 
And oh. then this is the donkey for, for our farm. Okay. Uh, again, also looks like a character just from Shrek. Nope. So that's not exactly what we were looking for in the project, but that's fine. I get, I get what you're saying. As long as you label them and you put a little uh, piece of paper and you write down farmer's daughter next to them, I think that's going to do for the class, for the diorama project. Oh, excuse me. I have got some diarrhea. I need to pop out real quick. Um, I'll be right back. Some diarrhea. <laughs> Before you go, though, I just want to let you know I have a bison that is also in our diorama. Okay, that bison looks more like a person with a bison on their head. Is that what that is? Because if it is, I'm going to need you to get it out of here. That no. is say That's sadist. It's a buffalo from Buffalo, New York that someone gave me. Mm. Well... I would say the most upsetting moment in my life as a Kansas City Chiefs fan was when you got gifted all of that Buffalo Bills gear when we went to Buffalo Bill, or sorry, when we went to when we went to Buffalo right last year, and you put it on. That was the most upsetting. It was upsetting. I help it, what people give me. I'm going to wear it regardless, unless it says something like something racist. racist or misogynistic or transphobic transphobic homophobic homophobic xenophobic xenophobic um anti-semitism agoraphobic is kind of fine with me agoraphobic yeah don't put on there oh this lady won't leave her house because i'm not gonna wear it well and if you're trying to get an agoraphobic person a t-shirt it, they're you're not gonna ever see it out they're no. just gonna be wearing it at home so you're it's not like, ever gonna see that person because they're not coming out yeah, unless you FaceTime regularly with this person, then you could be like, hey, oh my God, it's so good to see you. Oh, you're wearing the agoraphobic shirt mm. I bought you. That's fun. Are you thinking about coming out of the house? Mm. And, and, that, that, and then that's it. So They'll just don't no. do it. Yep. Mm. What else? I'm okay with an ageist shirt. I'm okay yeah. with an ageist shirt. If yeah. a shirt says no old fucks or, you know, if you're, if you're discriminating against a group of ages, I'm totally, that's totally fine with me. Yeah, I'm okay with ageism. I have no problem with that. Uh, you know, just be honest. Be honest about your ages. You know, we do it in dating. Why, you know, I think it's fine. Now, maybe if you're like, oh, we're not going to give this job to a person because of their age. You know, if they're applying to be a firefighter, you we can't be having an 80-year-old person firefight, probably. But there's some 80-year-olds that are more in shape than you and I, so... That is true. I mean, Clark's not 80. But. I was just thinking about <laughs> Clark. I just was like, oh, that guy is old enough to be my grandfather. Not old enough. Not no, not old enough to be my grandfather. Old enough to be my father, whatever. Older guy, hot, silver fox, strong daddy, natty. Very strong. Extremely strong. I'd say at the top of that is Mike O'Hearn. Then Clark. Mm -hmm. So are our you, chef, Michael Hearn, chef Clark. Okay, so where are you going to be putting Arnold Schwarzenegger in there? He's not in that equation because these are three of the strongest men in the world, and Arnold Schwarzenegger is just in a different galaxy. Michael Hearn is the strongest man in the world, as far as I'm concerned. Today, hundred percent. Mike O'Hearn is 100% the strongest man in the world. And Arnold, don't get me wrong, you had your time, and I was grateful for it. I think about it every day. One of my, one of my lifelong movie recommendations, two people will always be T2, okay? If there's a theater near you showing Terminator 2, Judgment Day, get out and see it. You gotta <laughs> feel it live. What are one of the, the sayings from that movie? Hasta la vista, baby. What about, I'll be back. I'll be back. What about, get your ass to Mars. Get your ass to Mars. Is that a different movie? Yeah, that's not that. What about, um, no, he's not. Get in the chopper. Get in the chopper. Get in the chopper definitely feels, could be Predator. I bet it was Predator because they were doing a lot of choppers there. Get in the chopper. Get in the chopper. <laughs> get in the chopper. Oh, God, it's such a fun accent to do. Ladies and gentlemen, it is, as they say on the internet, I was today years old when I learned that Tina could do a brilliant Arnold Schwartz. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> unbeknownst to me, <laughs> Tina D-Ball is secretly trying to vape, and she does an incredible Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're driving through the streets of Nashville. Get in the chopper! I'll be back getting chopper 24 
East Highway, Nashville. <laughs> oh, man. Hasta la vista. Hasta baby. la vista, baby. This song is hard. It's not my first language. <laughs> I talk by Nami. I need to practice it. I need to practice it. I, I will. I'll be back. I'll be back, guys, with a banger. I'm going to get to the point where I can conversationally talk like Arnold. We had a pretty great conversation about comedy yesterday after the show, which left me feeling inspired and, uh, what's another word? Wormy? Restless. And I feel like now I can take that same energy and put that on you. You need to start doing Arnold Schwarzenegger on stage. (laughs) (laughs) It's not even a relevant thing anymore. <laughs> if I just get on stage and I'm like, I end every set of mine and I go, I'll be back. <laughs> Hasta la vista, baby. Hasta la vista, baby. And people are like, what is that reference? Yeah, no one really knows. I st- uh, My walk-on song is the Terminator 2 <laughs> <laughs> theme song and only a few people like it. Can you, I'm going to be honest. If I went to a comedy show, and I saw any member of the show, host, feature, headliner, if I saw <laughs> guest spot, if any of them went on stage of the Terminator 2 song, oh man, I'd never stop laughing. How does it go? Pum, 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 pum. Will there ever be a time that you would go on stage to that song? You can feel it. That was a key change. (laughs) And yeah, Yeah. I'll total. uh, When I, for my special, I'd go on stage to Terminator. (laughs) Actually, I think I would exit to Terminator. Oh, yeah. Because at the end, you know, there's that pinnacle scene at the end have you seen it when's the last time you saw it is that the one with the liquefied man in it mm-hmm. the guy that tastes like dasani water I don't, i've never what's tasted the, what's him what's the difference between terminator and robocop a lot is robocop arnold schwarzenegger honestly i don't even know well i was gonna look my phone for my phone i don't know if i've ever seen robocop let me open up a look browser up. for you Can, for some reason, RoboCop, all I think of is Kevin James. I just, I don't know why I think of that mall cop, mall the Paul, or whatever. Da, 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 da. Yeah. That song is so good that I made my neighbor listen to it the other day before we left town. Wow. She was like telling me, uh, Emily Hickner, my neighbor, <laughs> she's a longtime comedian. Um, she ha- she lives next door to me and has for the last two years. It's incredible. We both watch each other's dogs. Our dogs are best friends. We just have a really wonderful time. So she just got engaged and um, she did the best set I have ever fucking seen her do at the Futures Female in St. Louis right before we went on Whoa. tour. I don't. I didn't even tell you about this. Um, she did this set, basically um, announcing her engagement to her newish boyfriend, Drew Mantia. Congratulations, guys! Oh, yeah, wrong one. So, uh, congratulations to them. But so the way that her dumbass fucking fiance. He spilled the beans. He fucking sent a picture of the engagement ring to Emily. Sent a picture of the engagement ring to my neighbor, Emily. And then she's like, what am I looking at? And she's like screenshotting it, obviously. Sending it to her friends. Like, what the fuck? (laughs) And then her boyfriend goes, that was meant for Libby. Libby's his sister. Whoa. Yeah. But we're like, wait. What? Like, what do you mean that it's meant for Libby? So Emily does this like 10, 15 minute set where she just screenshots everything, has it up on the projector and is like at at the end announces that she finally got engaged. And I I didn't even, 
realize what was happening because it was so funny and this funny story or these funny jokes about like my friend and you know she's 39 her boyfriends whatever they they're getting serious it was so funny I had no idea what was coming and then at the end she's like I'm engaged blah 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 and I started crying oh my god because I was so excited for her and then I like look over him and I was like wait is this real like and he's like yeah I'm a dumbass (laughs) <laughs> and he's looking over at me like, <laughs> <laughs> and he's an R and B producer. So when Emily and him first got together, they went on like their first little date or whatever. And Emily's like, yeah, he's an R and B producer. And afterwards she's like, you know, he like sings, he like played me some songs or whatever. And then she goes, R and B is my life. <laughs> and we're obviously doing bits. She doesn't know anything about R and B. So on the night they got engaged, Emily <laughs> runs up to me, hugs me after she does her set or whatever. And then she's like, R and B really is my life. <laughs> Oh, God, I'm so happy for her. Oh, God, he's such a fucking, he's a cool guy. I I really like him. He's weird, he's funny, and he's loud. Does he ever do R&B with people like, I don't know, Usher? Um, no, but he's probably on his way. Like, he's like a boss R&B producer in St. Louis. Like, incredible. I'm going to look him up. Drew Mantia. So, why I originally brought up this entire story of Emily was that Emily, last week... We're sitting at my house the day before I leave town again for tour. Mm -hmm. And um, Emily brings over her work and we're both just kind of bullshitting, hanging out, both trying to keep each other uh, productive. And Emily's like, I... Uh, Drew and I have this like Google Doc of movies that we all need to see or whatever. And I'm like, okay, what's on there? So I'm looking at it and I see Terminator 2. And I was like that's fucking awesome. I go, give me your laptop. And I like typed a little note to Drew and I was like, Terminator 2 is the greatest movie ever. And then I typed in, (laughs) I typed that out all so he could see it visually on the Google Sheets doc. Mm -hmm. How do you spell something like that? (sighs) B-E-R. I said B-E-R, because that's how I would pronounce it. If I read B-E-R-R-R, I would be like, Mm -hmm. how would you spell and honestly, I'd probably go with what I know, which is mRNA, <laughs> which uh, isn't a vaccine. Don't know what it means. Have no idea. Smyrna. Um, <clears throat> I'd probably go M-E-R, lots of R's after. Well, I'd like to be probably not the first person to congratulate Emily Hickner and her new R&B fiance on getting uh hitched yeah emily hickner's getting hitched to an r&b producer now H- emily hickner is one of the uh, one of the first women in comedy locally that i was like man she's doing it that's awesome yep she was <clears throat> one of the first it's funny because when i first started comedy i remember seeing her and like amy milton because i'm trying to think what women were really doing comedy amy. Emily. <clears throat> Amy Milton, Emily Ella. Hickner, Ella Fritz. Who was like 12. Yeah. So I remember like Emily was, you know, Emily's, I'm 31. I think Emily's 38. She's a little older than me, but she's always like looked so cool. Like she always has cool clothes on. So I remember like watching her do stand up when <clears throat> I was first starting and being like, man, she just like looks so cool. Like she just left New York and she's doing these like really edgy fucking jokes. And I'm up here, I don't know, doing weird stuff. What the (laughs) fuck am I doing? I'm wearing a fucking, my, the outfit I wore on my first open mic was like a black and white dress that looked like I was going to prison or going to be a referee. (laughs) I don't even remember what I wore for my first one. Oh God. I don't even know if I had clothes on. I did wear combat boots though. So it was cool. Okay. You know, that makes it cool. But yeah, I, uh, Emily, Emily, uh, is the first person I started a show with. It was called two girls, one mic. Yes. Remember that did that show once. Yep. We did an open mic, uh, weekly didn't last for long. Just didn't have a draw, man. Not done. Uh, We're not draw a draw. No. And, um, then we did a showcase for a couple of a year two maybe, but yeah. All right. God, that stuff is so hard to do. I've never done it, but it's like how time consuming to find people. First of all, to do a showcase, run it, find a place, 
But then do an open mic? Yeah, and I was, Ugh. like, making flyers on paint, dude. Like, what the fuck? I was like, oh, yeah, I'm done to try. Because I didn't even have a fi- – when I started stand-up in 2015, I didn't have a Facebook. I, like, had deleted it a few years ago because I was just like, I'm just done with all – I'm just done with Facebook. I Well, just all of it. I was like, I'm wasting my fucking time, and I hate this. And I'm like, I hate all these people. I don't like these people. Because I still had, like, all these friends from high school and on or, like, just that area of life. Right. So I remember vividly, like, going through and deleting everyone at one point. And then, like, I was just like, yeah, that's kind of stagnant, man. Just kind of kind of putting up posts for no one. <laughs> Did you make a new Facebook then when you... No, just- I don't think I... No, I didn't make a new one. I think I just reactivated re-activated. it. Reactivated. That makes sense. Yeah, because I got my OG one still reactivated reactivated prayer I, warriors activated prayer warriors activated that's so fucking funny dude we've been dying laughing listening to you say that on stage yeah, that was cool thanks for ruining one of my bits bro just kidding um chelsea burned a pot roast yep how happened today Okay, so listen, she puts this pot roast in last night about 11 p.m. Because we're like, man, we need some food for the next few days and yada, yada, yada. Right. Yeah, well. Yeah, well. So she puts a little pot roast into the slow cooker, puts uh, all this stuff in there, and she puts them in frozen, and everything smells amazing. I get woken up at 5.30 this morning to the smell of pot roast. And it was like... I can't take it, even though I love pot roast. Oh, it, I... I can't. It was incredible. It I was sick. Really? Why? I, it's just too much. Is it like a sensory thing? Oh, 100%. Like, but do you remember pot roast smells from when you were a kid? Oh, yeah, and I couldn't take it. Even when there then? was stuff that cooked overnight, I would be going crazy. And at the time, I didn't know. Now I know. And I'd be so grumpy and mad and angry. And my parents would be like, yo, what's wrong with you? You're so sensitive. Now I know it was a sensory thing. I can't stand smelling stuff cooking overnight. When it's really strong. Ooh. It makes me want to go to a hotel. That's interesting. Well, I'll tell you what it made me want to do. It made me want to open up that crock pot and dunk <laughs> my little grubby paws in there and get a little go, slab of pot roast. <laughs> I wanted it so bad. But oh. you didn't? No, it wasn't cooked. So uh, that was about 5 a.m. I woke up to that. And then um, I came out of the bedroom this morning, woke up uh, really early. I woke up like 11.45 a.m. Yeah, early. Um, so early and I didn't have my contacts in and I'm blind and I didn't have my glass on. So I'm walking around and Chelsea just looking at me so pissed off, like pointing at the pot roast. I'm like, what? She's like, it's fucking burned. This has never happened to me with a pot roast. I mean, and the thing what was the fucking hell? dry, dry as Everything fuck. dried up? Oh, it was gross. I mean, I Wonder fed some why. of it to the dogs, but wonder what happened and i took some bites of it you know because i'm not even if someone tells me something is burned i am still gonna try it right Uh, and and i'll because i do like things crispy sometimes you know i like Mm -hmm. well done shit like burnt ends oh yes was it just one big burnt in pretty bad dude it was bad. I How mean, did just, it dry up? She put it on high or something? She did put it on high, and she's like, I cooked it from frozen. And I'm like, I think TBH, I th- wonder if it's because she put it on high. I wonder yeah, if it was on low, on low. If it was. Did she have juice in there and stuff? I think so. And I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what happened. But yeah, pretty upsetting. Wow. Pretty upsetting fucking thing for me to wake up at 5 a.m. and be like, yeah, I can't wait to eat past roast tomorrow. It's going to be so good. Oh, God, I think about it so much. I mean, I thought about it so much. I sat there and kind of just hung out for a couple hours. You're just sitting over with your leg crossed, just like looking at it. Like- <laughs> yeah, I was just kind of hanging out. Just, Are you done yet? <laughs> well, that is sad. Yeah, it was a bit. Of, it was upsetting. That's something that I've never known her to do is to burn something. Yeah, it sucks. I've burned things quite a few times. but And in today's economy, pot roast isn't cheap. <laughs> you get yourself a rump roast? Might as well, more, re, what is it called? Remortgage your house? Refinance your home. Yeah, you your might home. as well refinance your home. Oh, dude, these two pot roasts? Those motherfuckers were like $100 total for these motherfuckers. And they were fucking big. 
It was sad. It, it really felt sad. I was not happy to she watch. She was pissed, wasn't she? Oh, she was pissed. I was pissed. So uh, that's, I feel so guilty when food needs to be thrown away that I am immediately like. Is that because you used to have to wait in line for bread and stuff when you were in Russia? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was just my fucking parents. I'm so glad I didn't have to do all that. <sighs> Would have been so bored. I wish we could have thrown food away. I feel so fucking guilty. Every, it makes me feel like I'm a terrible person. That's why I'm so obsessed with taking my leftovers. Because it makes you feel bad. And see, I don't feel bad. Oh, God, I feel terrible. I'm like, I, 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 I'm like, I could at least give it, if anything, I'll throw it out. Just the food so some animal can eat it. The animal or a bird. Yeah, some kind of bird or some kind of, some kind of, you know, I should just get a big slot bucket for all my leftovers and yeah. c- keep it on the side of my home so it, it, any animal oh, well, or pe- person can well, come up at any time and get a bite. Well, there's a couple people that have seen my mukbangs. With me and Chelsea, and said it looks like two pigs eating out a trough. <laughs> so get me a trough. <laughs> yeah, like there's no trough there. There, it, there, it literally doesn't look like there. Do I look like a pig? Just because I'm fat, I have no characteristics of a pig. Literally, n- I don't have hooves. Nothing about you represents a pig. Do I have a curly tail? No. Then they'll say, oh, it's it's a land whale. There's no such thing as land whales. Land comes on land, it's dead. And as far as I know, I'm alive. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm looking at you right now. Am like, I alive? You're alive. As yeah. far as I can <laughs> see, you are alive and well. And I would like to say something to all those haters, too, out in the world <clears throat> she that are definitely ass. not listening to our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but it is true when you're saying, oh, it's a land whale. No, what you should say is a beached whale. Yes, a beached whale. You don't say a land whale. No one calls it a land whale. You don't see whales That's not a species- walking around. And I'm not a beached whale either. I don't have fins. Yeah. Is there I have a- arms. I don't have a blowhole. Yeah, there's no blowhole. The only blowhole she has is her asshole. And it, it blows, but it doesn't squirt out water. No, they're for me it, to breathe. That that hole isn't connected to my esophagus or my lung. Diaphragm. None. If you're going to say I look like something, say I look like, I don't know, just say you look like a fat human. Yeah, just be like, you look like a fat bitch. You look like a fat ass. <laughs> just be like, fatty. That's whatever. I don't know. Quit, or, with, quit with the animal comparisons. You look like a cow. Have you ever seen a cow that has a regular nose and not a hoof? Like a, what are those things called? Nose. What's oh, it called? Snout? Snout. I was thinking snout. I don't have a snout. Mm-mm. Do I have udders? Some might say yeah. And yeah. I might say yeah too. Yeah, there are two udders. But, but they're not active. Yeah. They're so not active. Stop with the animal metaphors or similes. What is it, a metaphor or simile? Mm, I th- actually think um, it'd probably be a simile. Yeah, I'm just up here saying similes for jam. Oh, God. That's what you should change it to. <laughs> <laughs> I love that line. Sometimes people hate it, but when I say it and just start naming off, and I just say marmalade, jam. <laughs> That's a James Brown clip. There is a, oh, I got so scared. I'm like, wait a second. Why is there a phone next to me? Because that's supposed to be, oh, <laughs> oh my there. phone's supposed to be recording. What's it saying? Use cellular data or keep trying Wi-Fi. Cellular data? Why is it even trying Wi-Fi? Um, God, what was hey, I, what ca- oh, I was looking up RoboCop earlier. Well, don't be playing no clips because we already got copyright infringements on the last video. Oh, I ain't playing no motherfucking clips. Nope, it's not. It's not uh, Arnold. And RoboCop came out in 1987, and he's uh, half man, half robot. But it's like, he, who I don't is know. it? He's a weird guy. Who is it? Peter Weller. Who the fuck's that? God, I always thought that that was an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. No. Um. We need to find a place in Nashville where we can record when we're here. So that we don't have to deal with weather or sound or what? Oh, lights. We could just show up and then some unknowing producer could be like, 
whoa, you guys are intense and weird. Oh, they would be so uncomfortable. I'd be like, hit the button where it goes down. But he would, don't have that sound. He'd be like, so people like this? They're like, oh, that's really surprising. You have almost 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. That's really interesting. And you guys bought those followers or? Now, are those all bots? (laughs) Oh, they're not. You bought that. They're not bots. They're not bots or bot. He's like, I don't care what you guys do as long as you pay me. (laughs) You pay for your hour. You'll get your hour. I'll do everything. But man, woo. Oh, God. Seems like a waste. That seems so fucking cringe to me to have to do that. Just to go into a place where I don't even know the person and record the pod. Maybe we'd fall in love with them, though. Yeah, that's true. We could fall in love with them. And then Randy would be like, what the fuck, man? Then Randy would be like, well, why are you guys leaving me out? And we're like, well, you live in St. Louis. Yeah, well, we're in St. Louis, Randy. We'll come with you. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. As you can see, I went to two different locations to get my drinks today with Sonic and Duncan. As you can see, I went to no locations to get drinks today, um, and I'm pissed. All I want right now is like a coffee or a Coke Zero, something like that. Coffee, iced coffee sounds most ideal. Have you ever had the iced coffee at Sonic? No. Wow, it's disgusting actually that's a lie i had a roommate named allison way back when that fucking uh worked at sonic and she would bring that coffee it's like comes out of a concentrate i think oh that's why it's so gross yeah i think it comes out of a big old bag and then they kind of just mix it up with some water oh yeah i don't think they've got an active coffee machine at sonic well it was disgusting i ordered a, a coke zero I ordered a black, I ordered a coffee and a, and a iced coffee. And she brought it out. She goes, oh, we don't have any cream. I go, take that coffee back with you then because I ain't drinking it. <laughs> She's like, okay. Because I, I didn't have anywhere to put it. I only have two cup holders. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm confused. You ordered three drinks? I ordered three drinks when she brought them out. She, she brought you the coffees and said, we don't have cream. Yeah. And Got I was it. like, just take the regular coffee because i'm not going to drink it i'd rather drink my own urine <laughs> and she took my receipt like she was gonna refund it i go oh, don't even worry about it i don't even care yeah you're like you i'm like i'm not mad i just don't care it's it's too much to go back and forth right. back and forth We're so then i took one drink of the iced coffee poured that out yeah then went to duncan got this yeah, if anyone can confirm if Sonic uses a concentrate for their coffees, that'd be great. It tasted like it had sour milk in it. <clears throat> I don't know the taste of sour milk, but I know the smell. Yeah, it tastes. It would taste just like it smells, I would think. There's been a oh. c- couple instances I've, I've had some, you know, milk in my hand, and I always give it a shake. Have you ever milked a man? <laughs> I mean, yeah, right? Yeah. That just means making them come. Yeah. But extra, extra oh, coming. Like we're... <laughs> like they're like, ah, stop, it hurts. <laughs> no more. Whoa. Wait, what are you talking about? I have jerked off Harold to completion. It's my new thing, like doing that. Yeah. And I consider that milking. <laughs> 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 it's just giving a hand job but it's it's intense i know what you're saying because there's a lot you're really vigorous like a lot of spit a lot of stuff going on oh no no spit lots of loop oh you do loop because i learned it from this lady on instagram i know i've talked about it on here before i call it washing the hands i have no fucking idea well, what you're talking about there's this lady on instagram called kane the coach <laughs> okay and she, <laughs> she, uh, she, I love her, but she talked, she always talks about, you know, jerking guys off, blowjobs, stuff like that. 
And she's too dirty. And she talks about what, well, like washing your hands at the top of it. Oh, at the at the top of their penis. Yeah. So I call <laughs> it. I'm gonna wash my hands. To hear them, like, let me wash my hands. Um, but that's where I got the term from, and I've done that a couple times, and it's now okay. Been in t- really intense experience. Like I just do this. You're like <laughs> first you put some soap on there, and then you go like this. <laughs> me taking a rave's penis doing this <laughs> um you're supposed to just like that's not how i end up doing it it's more just like this <laughs> oh so this stays it's on bottom and that's kind of moving yeah whoa whoa so sh- I, I look like with those cool guys who are like what's up everybody you coming to this fucking rave tonight Well, I, I just really enjoy it because never in my 40, I'm going to say 35 years because I wasn't jerking guys off at the age of 10. Not in 35 years had I ever been able to manually jerk off a man. <laughs> sure. Because I would just use this method. Yeah. And that ain't doing it for men. No, you got to, well, it's got to be a, a a difference in speed. Also, you can't just do the same speed. You know what I'm saying? You can't just do all that. It's got to be, you've got to, like, even if it's one of these, like. (laughs) You know what I'm talking about? You got to change up the speed. You got to. Well, nobody's ever taught me. Get the RPMs up. No, no one ever taught me how to give it HJ. My mom never said, hey, I'm going to show you how to milk a man. No, no one ever sat me down. So I just assume you just go like this. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. For sure. It's a lot. I mean, a lot of wasted time. I'll say that. <laughs> I mean, I've wasted a ton of time. And I, I've never had a man say, hey, you could stop that because it's not doing anything for me. You have never had someone say no, that? No, but I picked oh. up on the cues where they're just like. <laughs> <laughs> they're like this. They're like. <laughs> <laughs> they're doing a FaceTime call. <laughs> Mom, can you see me? Mom, can you hear me? Sorry. Sorry. Okay, service is a little. Mom. Shh, hold on. Mom. I'm on the phone. I'm on the phone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no. I There's. So I wash that hands and I wash that dick right off. Yeah, yeah. No, I've, I mean, I've definitely like milked milk people can i be honest what it is for me it's just i think i get i've gotten lazy i think i get lazy sometimes during a hand job i get frustrated and angry really i get mad i get mad sometimes when i'm like okay this is incredible what's happening (laughs) but what if you played actual footage of me giving a blow job and it was just like this And I was like, so caught. I'm like, I literally, okay, guys, I recorded this. I don't get what I'm doing wrong. And I'm coming to you, Chelsea and Beth, like, what, what's going on? And then it's like, I'm just laying there like this. <laughs> it's like this, like the most uncomfortable, not fun sex you've ever seen in your life. How would you deal with that? Like, would you, would you laugh? I would, There's no way I wouldn't be able to watch. I would laugh, but I would also, I would go would on my laugh? Instagram and send you Kane, the coach's <laughs> profile and be like, check her out. <laughs> hey, check out Kane Corso. Okay. She's got it going on, Who's man. That? It's a dog. Oh, it's a kind of dog. You just keep saying Kane, the coach. And all I Kane think of coach. is Kane Corsos. Kane, the coach. And she always looks so nice. She has great lighting. She has a microphone. And she's there to offer support. And she's just all about making people come. Now, does she do everything or is it just penises? Uh, is it strictly, is she like, hey, this is how you make a penis come? No, she does male and female. Great. She's almost. She almost reminds me of like a, the teacher you had for maybe home ec or health class. 
doesn't get embarrassed, very thorough, even though everybody else is like. <laughs> sure. She's like, this is how it is. You're going to want to jerk your man to completion. He's going to love it. For sure. Hey, I used to be uncomfortable. I remember way back when someone sent me a text years. This was a long time ago. Like fucking, I was probably in my 20s, early 20s. And they said something like, yeah, I'm thinking about eating your pussy, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, uh-huh, you can't say that. And I remember being like <laughs> weirded out. Like I was just like uncomfortable because I was so uncomfortable with my body and like my, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just didn't really know. It's like I wanted to be hot and fuck, but I also was like, I don't know how to be hot and fuck. So what was your response? I think I said something. I was like, haha, oh my God. Uh, Me too. That's, <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about my pussy too. Me too. I just sent him a picture of me going like this. That's your penis. You just sent a thing you going. Oh. I sent a video of me doing this. You're like, I'm about to wash them hands. And he's like, what? Oh, yeah. Watch this, guys. <laughs> like, put a little soap. What about this? What about this? <laughs> then you take it and you put it under a Dyson dryer. and a <sighs> That's cool. I mean, yeah, the oil and stuff like that. That makes sense. I feel like a nice vitamin D oil could be a fun kind of, you know, milking um or session uh astroglide <laughs> that's my lube of choice <laughs> is it really oh god love an astroglide that's fun i don't use lube i don't either but just in case yeah for sure you know i am getting up towards the menopausal time so i'm gonna start drying out soon yeah have you hit menopause yet uh I think I'm in what's called perimenopause, where oh, I will have a period for like six months, and then I'll have one randomly. Mm -hmm. I um, my eggs are dry, dried up. You're not gonna have a bit any baby, and I really wanted to have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have a baby. You're too I old. Can't have a baby anymore. Nope, it's done. That's wild. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I stopped taking my birth control. I think in December. And you're pregnant. Yeah, I'm pregnant. No, I'm not. Um, but I have, I mean, I think I've had one period since then and I love it. I don't even care when I go to the place, when I go to the OBGYN, I'll make sure to take a pregnancy test before. So I don't have to have a little conversation with them. I mean, I know they're going to make me do one. What are you guys using as protection? Nothing. Whoa. Nothing. Pull out. Pull out. You method. guys are gonna have a baby. No, we're not. Oh boy. No. Nope. Uh uh. We're not. Hasn't happened yet. We're doing great. Well. Nope. Cut to four months from now. God, I didn't think I could get pregnant. <laughs> uh, golly, guys. Uh, hey, what's up? Bella? That would be absolutely nuts. So I, 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 I think I told you that I had a dream recent, like earlier this year that I was, Rafe and I were like going to have a kid and I was, it was disgusting. Does he know that you're, you're not on birth control or are you trying to trap him with a child? Oh yeah. I haven't told him at all. I've just been letting him nut me constantly. <laughs> and every time I'm like, oh, God, thank God I can't have a baby. <laughs> I say that every time I go, thank God I can't have a baby. Thank God I can't get pregnant. Yeah, so it's been pretty fun. Just kind of waiting, waiting for something to mm -hmm. germinate up in here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm trying. I'm letting other guys nut in me too. I mean, any guy I around, I'm trying. That guy that just drove by. Yeah, the guy that drove by in the white Ram. Yeah, Excuse I saw me, him, sir. Would you like to nut in her? Yeah, we're on. I'm just kind of just doing an experiment just to see if I can get even have a kid. Well. Just a little social experiment. That's an experiment with a uh, very costly and. Um, I don't think I could ever. <laughs> I don't think I could ever like, I mean, because there are people that really do that, that are like, they stop taking their birth control. They stop doing whatever because, yeah, they're they're trying to trap someone. That's nuts. <sighs> Can't think of a worse word. Way to trap someone. Oh, golly. Why would you do it with that, man? Do it with something cooler. Like, I don't know, a mortgage. Yeah, get a mortgage. Get a, 
buy a dog together. Buy a dog together. Go out for a fucking nice steak dinner. Both of you spend $150 each mm-hmm. at a dinner. Do that. You're looking at a very costly, lifelong commitment with somebody that you don't even really like, dude. Someone. Yeah. Mm-mm. Oh, Thank God. You. Thank you to whoever gave these John Stamos. Oh, it says Amber A. Thank you, Amber A. Amber Ray gave us all some banger earrings. I got a nice pack. They just have a really nice pack of Marlboro cigarettes. That just a is small so one. That is cute. Mm-hmm. They're adorable. God, I wish I could smoke Marlboros. Oh, God, I love I smoking. Would, if we still smoked, we'd be smoking in here right now. We would be smoking on the podcast. Yep. I don't know if you can do that, but it's like we would 100% be chain smoking on every podcast we've ever had. If, if we couldn't do it on camera, we would definitely smoke before. And after. Oh, yeah. We would take a break in the middle. Oh, I think, for sure. I think there was time. No, I think we've always stuck it out for the full hour, but we're always like, <gasps> oh, God, I need to smoke. Give me a cigarette. Right after. Golly, I love smoking. I do too, man. And I mean, you know, maybe later. Maybe I'll start back up later. I'm too old to do it at this point. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm talking about the elderly times I'm, when I'm on my way out, I yeah. guess. Yeah, I guess I'm going to start taking up smoking again. I have nothing to live for. I don't have any kids, and I'm in a retirement home. Oh, golly, you're not going to believe it. My kids left me here. (laughs) Wait, you don't have any kids. Huh? (laughs) Wait, what? Where am I? What are you talking about? No. No. (laughs) <laughs> oh, that's sad. Thinking of an old man being in a retirement home going, no. <laughs> and my kids left me here. You don't have any kids, Ralph. No, they left me. Ralph, uh, you have no family or friends. Uh, then who are those children that I was hanging out with? Those are just some kids that come up and volunteer. No, those were my children. You're a liar. You don't have a 15-year-old child. I have a 15-year-old child named Tyler. Tyler. No, those are, you don't have any He kids. plays basketball. Okay, those are your kids. Oh, God. They're your kids. Yeah. They always say just whatever the person with dementia is saying, just agree with them. Is that really the rule? I've heard, I've heard like stuff like that, like. They're not going to know the difference. I, I, truly, one of my biggest fears is, in is, life is getting dementia. Or oh, something. God. That Anytime is, I forget something, I'm like, is it happening? <laughs> really? Yes. Because I won't know. I mean, I guess you kind of know at first. Yeah. But then once you're in it, it's like, you don't fucking know. And I'll be going, where am I? Huh? <gasps> Saying profanities. Oh, God. I mean, there's no way I won't be a fucking wild slut when I'm older. I'll be out of control. I? I just hope that's my biggest hope for my life and is that I can stay active enough and and like that I, I'm not going to need help. <laughs> well, just keep, keep getting up off the floor. Yeah. That's a big indicator. So just keep getting up off the floor. Yeah, I just sit on the floor and then I get up. Get up. Those are the rules. That's what you do with your body. When we went to that um, that spa, where were we? Where we went to that Korean spa? L.A. And it was terrible. Everyone upstairs <clears throat> was on the floor. The oldest people. And I was like, man, this is... This is what they mean. Like, you have to keep that mobility and that flexibility. Some of the oldest people I've ever seen comfortably sitting on the floor having a great time. Oh, literally, like, laying there like they're about to get fucking senior pictures done. A whole gaggle of elderlies. I mean, it was literally, like, six old ladies. They're, I'm talking six. They're minimum of 60. They had a little trays of food and they were just sitting there eating talking getting up off the floor faster than that thing sitting there with their legs crisscross applesauce and i was in a massage chair that i paid money for that was squeezing my legs so hard i thought they were gonna pop oh god i had to keep taking them out because it was like (laughs) i was laying on some weird massage bed there (laughs) i just laid down in this thing and it was like okay there you go it was like a cot that massaged you. Yeah, it was kind of like the hydro massage machine they have Ooh, at Planet Fitness. I love those. 
Have you ever been? You've used it? Ooh, I loved it. I used one in Mexico in uh, 2009. It was blasting me, and I loved every second of it. Where are you going? Ooh. Yes. Ooh. Yeah, I was doing that, and there was a cool guy next to me coming in there. Shout out to Terry at My Planet Fitness in St. Louis. He's a cool-ass motherfucker. I just thought about him. Just a cool fucking guy. I'm still thinking about Wee Spa. What else was in there that was weird? Nothing. I mean, they really, well, they had the cold plunge pool there. Yeah, we went, we went, we didn't go to where we normally go, which Which is is King King Spa. Spa. And we went to Wee Spa. It was fine, but like they, you know, I think they were just fucking totally busy as fuck or something. They're busy. There was no slots for facials or rubs scrubs and i just wanted to get a little little scrub but i went to their store and i bought a it's like a um scrub sleeve so basically you put your hand in it and you're like you get all the fucking layers (laughs) off your skin yeah i do that every day in the shower with those little hand mitts oh god it feels so good nothing like it it really it really uh Gets my lymphatic system going. The only thing I wish is that I didn't have to shave anymore. And when I used a scrub glove like that, that all my hair would just come off. I'd like it to just go ahead and come out of the... The The follicle hole. Follicle hole without having to use nair. Without having to do any of that. you say nair? Nair. Yeah. Do you use nair? uh Uh-uh. This stuff stinks so bad. Uh Uh-uh. I'm scared of it. Dude, my skin's too sensitive. If I put nair on my skin, it's something... It'll be fucking, I'll have a breakout I'll never heal from. You'll get a third degree burns and your first layer of skin will come off. Is that, that's a possibility, isn't it? I don't know. You can get scolded it's, by it. It's called a depilatory, isn't it? I don't know. That is a very scary word. Very, very 80s. Dude, did you see that? Sh- <laughs> <laughs> did you see that story I shared of the chocolate bar uh-uh. commercial? Oh. I looked at it. It was like, this is the most highly produced chocolate commercial. And as soon as it played, I knew every word in it. It was from 1986. Um, it's a Nestle commercial. I don't know if we could play it, but I want you to watch it. Um, it I, I can't believe that they made not only the video, but the song for a commercial about a chocolate bar. What's the song? Sing it for me. Uh, for some reason right now, I cannot sing it. As soon as it turns on, I'll be able to sing it. Yeah, your brain's like, doesn't have it. The commercials. N-E-S-T-L-E-S. Did I not share it last night? Oh, God. I was obsessed with the lady in red. With the. N-E-S-T-L-E-S. Figure skater. Dreamy why. The background singer. N E S T L E S. This looks like Mike O'Hearn. Like, it's like a fucking beautiful. I did a deep dive onto that commercial last night. I'm very, uh, that's interesting that it was for white chocolate. A lot of people don't <laughs> like white chocolate. Well, Dreamy white, creamy white, N E S T L E S. N E S T L E S. And the way that guy, it's like, it looks like Michael Herr on the t- cover of a fucking erotic <laughs> romance novel. The guy that was like, N E S T L E S. N E S T L E S. I watched a podcast with the guy that wrote and sang that song last night. What? I, I was in a deep dive. I was like, how could. They have produced this masterpiece for a candy bar. <laughs> yeah, it's no, it's very good. It's like a Fleetwood Mac yeah. video. And the spinning too. It was it was really nice. There was a lot of a lot of layers. Found the model that was in the beginning of it. That's good. And looked at his body of work that he did after the N E S T L E S. I will say the fonts on like those <laughs> old eighties things, oh God, they're so simple and good. I just love them so much. Dreamy white. There was like a snow white looking lady in there. N E S T L E S. Let me let me hook it into my thing here. 
And if it we're at the end, so if it is a copyright thing, I'll just fucking cut it out, dude. I'll just fucking cut it out. I'll just show these motherfuckers. N E S T. I love. I mean, there's nothing better than a cool Dreamy commercial. Dreamy white. Figure skating is not as cool as it used to be, and I'm pissed off about that. What do you mean? It's just not as cool. You don't see it in any commercials anymore. There used to be figure skaters on every motherfucking commercial. You know who Scott Hamilton is? Oh, of course. Of course you know who fucking Scott Hamilton is. Nobody gives a fuck about figure skating anymore. Dreamy white. I will say one of my favorite candy bars ever in the world is a Hershey's Cookies and Cream. I will Ooh, fuck one of those up anytime I see it. With those little tiny crunchy cookies in there. Oh, it's good if you just bite in so hard, quick, or you put it in your mouth and hold it on your tongue and just kind of suck on it oh. and let every everything dissipate into your mouth and and get your insulin and your blood sugar <laughs> up. I'm I'm insulin resistant. Yeah, so unfortunately I'm insulin resistant. I'm insulin sister. Creamy white and the backup singer. Sweet dreams you can resist. N E S T L E S. A dream as sweet as this. N E S T L E S. Creamy white. Dreamy white. Nestle makes the very best. N E S T L E S. Sweet dreams you can resist. That is nice. Can't uh, resist. I want to eat a Nestle so bad right now. Yeah. I am uh, all around very pleased. Creamy what? What? N-E-S-T-L-E-S. Creamy white. Oh, God. It's, that is cool. And the, I mean, the, the video, everything. Oh, you guys got to go look the video up. Yeah, they look fucking majestic. Mm-hmm. Creamy white, N E S T L E S. Creamy white. Hey, man. I mean, I'm saying let's 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 uh, let's bring figure skating back, okay? I need my I need the Slop Citizen Army to really just <laughs> I need y'all to assimilate and activate and and start watching figure skating. Let's go. Let's get let's get involved. I'm trying to think. It's Summer Olympics. There's I don't. There's no figure skating there. I need to start watching world championships or something. Seeing that figure skater dance to the N E S T L E S song, I gotta look at just it. Just shook me N -E -S -T -L -E -S. to my core. N -E -S -T -L -E -S. is good i will uh also say too that song it has the perfect you know when you wait on hold that one hold song that's like you know what i'm talking about and it's like oh that's that's a sound creamy one and honestly it's probably why i like the terminator 2 song so much because it's like <laughs> it's in it's in our soul we love that synth shit <sighs> that little bop i want an, i just want my life to be just like that nestle commercial same i Creamy and the lady they're like all right we got a oh, got a backup singing thing for you, you pay is 50 dollars um you're just gonna go Wah! you would have taken it in a and heartbeat. it's gonna rock the world yeah not only are we the world we are the world, but we're also going to rock the world. So rock let's it. go. All right, y'all. 
let's just take it out with this. Yeah. Play it again one last time. Take us home. Yes. Dreams you can't resist. Love y'all. Ding.